channel and on this episode of Sundays with the Love the Spencer. Oh, beautiful. You know, I love being here, you know. <laughs> I love to talk. I just feel connected to you guys every time I talk, every time I come on the screen. All right. Thank you for joining us today on this lovely Sunday evening. Hope you all went to church. Yeah, the Lord's Day hallelujah somebody <laughs> okay so today we are going to be talking about a very beautiful thing remember we are still on the series of what every young couple should know and as i always say as a single you will learn so much from this you know it's it, it, what it does is to prevent you from learning on the job like i always say also learning on the job is quite stressful so you can re reduce the stress by getting this knowledge and working on it okay so today we are going to be talking about a wife with a sanguine temperament yes being a sanguine is not a problem is the problem is when we use our weaknesses to work with people when we bring in our weaknesses into our relationship okay as you can see i'm a full-blown extra extra sanguine <laughs> sanguine extraordinaire <laughs> <laughs> yes so i love all the sanguine ladies see if you are a sanguine like me you are a beautiful and a rare breed trust me let nobody put you down let nobody say hey you talk too much hey you, uh, uh, uh. no you're a rare breed because in you has the ability to make people smile you know now we are the life of the party any anywhere we enter you cannot just be moody do you get so it's not something that you learn to do it's something that is inherent so be proud of your temperament as a sanguine but there is another side to this if we don't know how to harness our powers we can put it in the wrong way and have negative results of course first of all i want to say some of the characteristic of a sanguine so a sanguine we love attention we love to talk we are the life of the party um name them name them you can name them in the comment section if you're a sanguine what do you like to do we don't like dull places you know we want things we live in the present we easily forgive do you get so um and one Thing about the sanguine in relationship and marriage is that we are attracted to the melancholy the introvertish end okay we are always attracted to the guys that are cool that just have their thing going on cool you know they are not the ag -ag 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 -ag, like us kind of people we just you know people that think guys that think they their step is cool actually that's what got me attracted to my husband he's just so cool he listens to me do you get so he, he everything about him is cool cool he doesn't talk too much he just listen he smiles you know and all that and all that but there are some misconceptions we have and those are the things we are going to deal with today so first of all as a sanguine wife or as a sanguine spouse you should know that your husband is not always comfortable with the way you speak I've learned that over time so the fact that he's quiet does not mean he's a good listener because he's a melancholy he might not be able to express his feeling the way you express your feeling as a sanguine wife we know that whenever we are angry we just let it out no matter how it comes out we let it out when we are happy we let it out we are emotional beings we are always letting out emotions so when we are angry we just say it i just say it and let it go out of my mind but sometimes we do that at the expense of our spouse how do i mean sometimes we just talk and we don't think about what we say we don't think if this thing i'm saying if it is good if it will hurt my spouse we don't think about it all we just ha want to know is ah, i just let my feelings out i don't hurt feelings and you're using it as a, a a a weapon against him because he doesn't talk this is a bad side to it so as sanguine as a sanguine wife a spouse what you should you do think before you say it is quite difficult but we can do it with uh, um, with practice we can gain mastery when i first got married i could just come and rant and rant and rant and know that i don't use abusive words i could just say so many things say so many things say so many things and i feel in my mind that he's listening to me he's concurring but over time i learned that why he doesn't talk is because at that moment i've said so many things that have hurt him 
To me, it might not be hurtful words, but to him, they were hurtful. So as a sanguine spouse, you should be very careful to know that an introvert is very particular about the words they hear. So the way he interprets the words you say that you feel does not have any meaning is different from the way you interpret it. You can interpret it as, I, I, I just said it now, not in, I, was, I didn't have anything in my mind, but he is interpreting it as disrespect. I don't know if you get me. So we, we, we are always, ah, our husband listens to us, but most times they are not actually listening. They are all, they are, they, they feel that their ego has been brushed. And as a sanguine, we'll be careful because all men have ego. That's what makes them men, not the um, bad side of the ego. They have ego. So as a sanguine, you, you should be careful not to overpower your husband by your words by your actions you know we have too much energy be careful not to be careful not to because they would feel disrespected and hello sanguines you know we don't like silent treatment and they will not get into that mode of silent treatment and just look at you whenever you want to do the thing they just look at you so what am i saying be careful of your words be careful of your words in as much as you want to be expressive it's difficult for a sanguine to bottle up anger yes i know most times i just don't know how to bottle it up but you know with the help of god you can learn to not talk about it and forgive since we have the um, ability to forgive easily you know we could harness our energy into the positive things so instead of talking and talking out of bounds we can harness that energy into okay um let me keep quiet whenever the anger dies down i talk about it it's possible but sometimes it's difficult because at that point you want to blob but you can also keep your cool when you know that this thing is detrimental you can keep your cool i don't know if you get okay secondly as sanguines we should be patient with our husbands be patient with your fiance be patient be patient you know they are not like you mm? our husbands are not like us they are not like you so don't expect them to be like you so you you want everything to be fast 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 but they but they they take their time, calculate it, get the pros and the cons and know what to do about it. But most times when we have an idea, we we'll just want to execute, sharp, 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 sharp. Know that they are not like us. He is not like you. So don't even force him to be like you. Be patient. So he needs time to process some things. Be patient. It doesn't mean that he's dull and he doesn't mean that he's slow he needs time to process the thing so don't feel like you're smarter and you're wiser you can never be you can never be because most times the 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 bad end to it is that most times what happens is that we rush into ideas and rush out quickly so they are like the balance that will tell us okay this thing you want to do these are the pros these are the cons do you know that that is when you see that I, I didn't think about it this way so there is no need for you to rush with them they are not like you so they are just like the stabilizers like seriously there are some things i'll be like oh god i wish my husband was here he's like my stabilizer so whenever i'm going out of the, he's the one that draws me back because to me i don't feel like i don't feel like i'm going out of band i just feel like i'm just being myself of course you know we like to live in the moment so we don't care about the future consequences we don't care about anything so he's the one that draws me back so but over time i feel i used to feel that ah you don't understand me hey, this one this one so but i've learned that ah i have to be patient patient knowing well that he is the one that is my engine yes he's the engine while i'm the tire and the steering and everything he's the engine of my life and of my activities per se jiget so be patient don't see your husband as a dull man he is not dull because Truth be told, when we tell, uh, we, we, truth be told, he is the one that directs you. Yes, he is the one that directs you. Most times we rush into things and we rush out. We just have an idea, ah, today I'm going to read 10 books. And you see that you don't read the 10 books. But with him by your side, you've noticed that you can overcome and you can scale through on and you can actualize that goal. So what did I say? Be patient. He's not dull. He's not a dullard. He's not slowing you down. He's not killing your vibe. 
he's just being himself okay third thing is i mentioned it in the second point third thing is don't expect him to change don't expect him to be like you you cannot he can't be like you so two persons cannot be loud at the same time in the house i used to say something if the two spouses are loud man the children will be on the roof do you understand me so he can't be like you while you're blowing hot he's blowing cold that is the balance of life so it, it creates an environment for the children to settle down so when mommy is blowing hot they know that ah daddy there is, there, there is daddy that is blowing cold and sometimes too there are some situations you don't need to blow cold that is where you come in there are some situations you don't need to blow hot that is where he come in that's the he comes in that's the balance so don't expect him to be like you and you know i used to say when i was dating my husband like ah he's too dull ah he doesn't talk why are you not talking someone will just come and talk to you like this you will not even answer the person but i've learned in marriage the few months i've been in marriage that hey that's his temperament he doesn't need to change what he just needs to do is to harness his strength into making the marriage work and the relationship work i to harness my strength into making it work then we work on our weaknesses together i'm not saying melancholies don't have weaknesses they do but somehow we notice that their weaknesses is where we have strength in and our weaknesses is where they have strength in so that is the that is the harnessing of energy to make things work so if we if we just stay on our own lane and they stay on their own lane or we are expecting them to come to our own lane so many things will spoil so for example imagine two sanguines in a house though we forget it is they will never be serious they will never achieve any goal that's the truth they will never achieve any goal sanguines could be goal oriented but some we easily give up but this the melancholies they don't they keep pushing they keep pushing okay what do we do okay let's try this other way but we minute we try one try to we just giving us say well we are not doing again but that's that's a weakness that the melancholy is feeling so don't 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 see them as you know ah, they are too dull i want them to be like me ah, why 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 for example my husband does not like going out i love going out but over time we have learned to eh, 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 harness our energy together and we are now on a plane so what is the plane i want to go out he too sometimes wants to go out so my excessive wanting to go out has been reduced because most times for sanguines we just do things unnecessarily we spend unnecessarily me i used to be a very wonderful spendthrift i spend unnecessarily but somehow that, that that's a weakness of, actually of a sanguine we don't know how to save but a melancholy things ahead so it could be it could be it could be annoying at the beginning be like ah, ah, are you telling me what to use my money for you know sandwich we are like we are like that we need to buy this we need to buy this but over time i've learned okay can we prioritize because the truth is that most times you don't prioritize our sanguines can we prioritize what do we want what do we not want what sometimes we can move out and say hey, let's buy something now to cool our blood we have tried <laughs> like i always say i say ah, ah baby give me something i've tried that i've not been spending so much as i as i know how to spend I, at least buy me something and tell me ah where do you are trying to get and sometimes too they tilt i say okay let's buy this even if it's not so important let's just buy it just because of my wife to get so don't push them into being who you are no but find a way to create the balance so you tilt towards him and he tilts towards you that's the balance so I, I've, I've heard singles especially single ladies that want to you know drive i don't want to marry a husband that will keep me down now know that a melancholy husband can also be insecure that's different i'm not talking about this an insecure husband that will say no don't go out because he feels that ah, you want to overshadow him no i'm talking about someone who is secure but just wants you to be a little more disciplined because sometimes we feel like oh, i want to want to go to this party want to go to this want to go to the we want to do this we want to do this every time we want to do this one ah, there's a party going on there ah there's oh one bear hey bad day hey all that and all that so most times you see that we expend so much energy doing nothing so they are our balance so you should be grateful to god for the kind of spouse he has given to you if you're a sanguine yes you should be grateful to god finally 
see your husband as the engine to all your activities. Don't see him as a, 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 someone who does not know anything. That husband that you feel does not know anything might go out and be helpful to another person. Always run back to him for ideas. You know, we, we are always prone to push forward, but somehow discipline yourself enough to come back. I say, okay, baby, I want to do this. So, of course, we know we are spontaneous. So, you want to buy something? Ah, come back. When you realize yourself, ah, come back. Okay, I want to buy a shoe. What do you think? I want to do this. What do you think? They are our engine. See them as the engines. Do you understand? So, that husband that you feel that is not talking, by the time you start going to him and putting your plans before him, you see that he will restructure it and make it better than you ever thought it would be. He will restructure it. He will be the one to think for you. He'll be your brain box. He'll be thinking, but not every time though. He'll be thinking, you'll be like, oh, baby, what do I think? What do you think about this? He will talk. I say, okay, let's do it this way. Let's do it this way. Let's do it this way. Do it this way. And you, at the end, at the end, you find out that, wow, really, this is a better way to do this. So don't always feel that you are in charge of the situation. No. Don't always feel that way and don't feel that he, he doesn't have anything to bring to the table. See, we need to be careful as sanguines. We need to be careful because we are prone to overshadowing our spouses. We are, especially when you have a bit of choleric nature, <laughs> we are prone to overshadowing. We are prone to keeping them at the corner, you know, always going for things and feeling like, ah, uh, ah, uh, me, I don't want anybody to stop me. Oh, I'm a musician. Maybe you're a music minister. I'm a music minister. He shouldn't bring me down. He should. No, 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 no. That's the wrong way to eat. If you keep going like that, he'll keep quiet. But he will harness his energy into something else. Into some other person that needs his ideas. So as a wife, you need to go back to him to ask for ideas, not permission. You know, when, when we hear permission, we just bring out our ego like this. No, just say, okay, baby, what do you think about this? Okay, I'm going to so place. What do you think about it? And whenever he says do this, let's be sensitive enough to obey. Let's be sensitive enough to obey. So there's a thin line between being a sanguine and a sanguine wife being all over the place and being proud. Unconsciously, we can just put our husbands under the box and we keep moving and we feel that we are all over the place, you know, things and things. That, I know marriages that have caused issues. For example, you see that your children need a school bag. Without telling your husband, just go ahead and buy a school bag, especially when you're the one anymore. We have to be careful. We have to be careful. We don't want our husbands to walk around with bruised ego. No. Okay, and on the other hand, if you're married to a sanguine, you know you need to give her a lot and lot of attention. Listen to her. But this video is to you as a young lady who find yourself as a sanguine, find yourself as a sanclaw, a little bit of choleric. We need to be careful. So as a sanguine lady, please bridle your tongue. That is the thing that causes trouble. You see our tongue. Oh God. That's the thing that causes trouble. Bridle our tongue. Sometimes we can be angry, but find a way to talk right. Talk right. Talk right. And give him an opportunity to talk also. Don't talk, 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 and keep talking and keep talking and keep talking and he'll be looking at you. Give him an opportunity to talk. Then finally, what I'll say is, the Spirit of God can control our temperaments. There are extremes to this. As a sanguine, you have an extreme. And really, the extreme don't always go end up in the, in the right way. It ends up in the wrong way. So you can ask the Holy Spirit to help you. So most times, yes, I do. I ask. And most times, I just feel suppressed. I just like, ah, I'm suppressed. I want to say something, but I just feel that there is a heavy weight on my spirit that I can't say it. Then I'll check what I want to say. And at the end, I'll find out that ah, this was not supposed to be said. So when you invite the Holy Spirit to you, into your life, He gives you that balance. He helps you to, to, to censor what you say. He helps you to censor your actions. So living with a sanguine woman is not a wrong thing. As a sanguine, you don't want to be a contentious woman. So the Holy Spirit, you can ask the Holy Spirit to help you. Before, I used to be a victim of talking and talking and talking. Oh God, I will talk to Jesus. When I remember it, I will be like, ah, I will talk to the point. The, 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 the man of God will just be looking at me and be like, ah, ah. 
You know, I know that kind of look. Where is all this coming from? Because I've talked and talked and talked and talked and talked. I will say the one. Ah! Even right now, I'm when I remember all those things, I'm like, ah, ah, what went what entered you at that moment? Because why? I'm still in the process. The Holy Spirit has helped me. So the Holy Spirit can still help you. So if you're having issues in your marriage because of your mouth, the Holy Spirit can help you. And also, I want you to tell yourself that this is my weakness. I talk too much. And most times in the midst of talking too much, I say hurtful things. Tell yourself, don't live in self-denial because that's, that's, that's no way to come out. Tell yourself that this is my weakness and God will help you. And the Lord will help all of us. So thank you so much for joining us today. And remember, as a sanguine, you are not a bad person. You are not a bad person. You, in fact, it is your sanguine nature that attracted your spouse to you. Okay? So let's not let's not live in our weaknesses. Let's enhance our strengths and make our relationship and marriage work. So thank you for joining us today. God bless you. If you're joining for the first time, thank you. Thank you. You can subscribe and hit the notification bell. So in the comment section, you can tell us what did you, what, what, what as a sanguine wife, how have you harnessed your, your strength into making your marriage work? And if you're a melancholy husband or phlegmatic husband, tell us how best to relate with a sanguine wife and we'll see you next time next time by 7 p.m gmt plus one next sunday god bless you